In your car, listen to Newswatch 16 on WKRZ AM 1340. Proud to serve Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania, this is WNEP 16, the news station. Now, Nolan Johannes, Karen Hart. Chief Meteorologist Tom Clark with his backyard forecast and Joe Zone on sports. This is the News Watch 16 update. Good evening. There's hot controversy in Schuylkill County tonight. A huge tire fire near Pottsville and St. Clair is fueling the dispute between the owners of the tires and local officials. As Nightbeat reporter Bob Constantini says, it looks as though the fire and the controversy will both continue to heat up for quite a while. Firemen are lighting some of the tires in hopes of getting it over with. This field in the St. Clair Industrial Park is darkened by the heavy black smoke as officials decide to let many of the tires burn. And there's actually no way to get them out. So what we had to do here was separate these tires. We used front end loaders, which is over there, and we separated them, letting us make more or less like a fire break. Firemen expect the tires will smolder for several days after the flames die down. Township officials tell us the tires were dumped here by a man named Wilbur Webb, who owns a tire dealership on Route 61 near Pottsville. The Schuylkill County Zoning Board and East Norwegian Township officials say Webb Tire has no permit to dump the tires in the open field. But Wilbur Webb and his partner Ned Kelly argue they're just storing what they estimate to be about two million tires. It's an industrial area. And it sees no reason because we are strictly in a business. Those tires are resaleable, and they're close to being sold right now. Schuylkill County and East Norwegian Township officials say it's a dump, and this week went to court. Tuesday, there was a court injunction put against them. No more dumping, and they had to start hauling out. And this is what they do. They come back and set it on fire on us and give us all this hassle now. You believe that people who own this, Definitely. Uh, own these tires set it on fire? So, somebody with, uh, works for them or something had something to do with it. How do you feel about that? I feel that no one from this business set the tires on fire. I feel that uh, it was set on fire by someone else. Webb and Kelly saw thousands of dollars go up in smoke with this fire and say township officials may have set it just to get them out. Investigators say it's definitely arson. Now they'd like to find out who set it. Bob Constantini, News 16, East Norwegian Township, Schuylkill County. In Oliphant tonight, Lackawanna County mayors met with some lawmakers to talk about the water problems in the area. And most of the blame was put on PG&W and the Public Utility Commission. Senator Robert Mello said it's an embarrassment to the people that PG&W would ask the PUC for a rate hike, a rate hike that would make consumers pay for the company's mistakes. In our power to make absolutely certain that the filtration system right here is paid for out of the fat in the gas and water company because we're going to ask for their records. The officials say in the long run, changes will have to be made to shape up the PUC. Some of our lawmakers are questioning another state agency about how it's been handling a problem with chemicals near Girardville. This is Skycam 16's view of the hazardous waste site in question. It's in Schuylkill County, the old Keystone Chemical Company in Butler Township. People who live near the site are afraid chemicals dumped here are seeping into their water supply. Today, a state government conservation committee wanted to find out if there is reason to worry. Is that a hazardous waste facility? Yes, it is. Okay. And it has been? Yes, it has. And it has met the requirements under law? Not under current law, no. Although the chemical company isn't operating right now, a new company wants to take it over this summer, and that has a lot of people near Girardville concerned. Concern over the cancer causer EDB has sparked another product recall here in Pennsylvania. This time the State Agriculture Department says two lots of Cracker Jack extra fresh popping corn are contaminated with too much EDB, that pesticide that's banned here in the United States. Here are the lot numbers on the jars, 3327D and 333D. If you have any Cracker Jack extra fresh popping corn with these numbers, take it back to the store. The brothers whose bankrupt cheese company left some area dairy farmers high and dry are asking court permission to get back in business. Shep's Cheese closed this Levin Township plant in Wyoming County last year. You see it from Skycam 16. Now owing millions to farmers here and in New York, the New Jersey firm is asking a bankruptcy judge to allow them to start up again with a new head man and also employing both Benedict and Alfred Shep's Jr. 
While some Shep's creditors say they have serious reservations about the new plan, area farmers like the intent of the plan to pay them back for past losses. No word on when the plan would be approved or if the Lemon Township plant would be reopened. Coming up, we'll tell you why dog owners should beware. Plus, a little later, the story of this year's hottest romance. We'll meet a couple that's really fired up as News Watch 16 Update continues. Our third couple is representing the cities of Wilkes-Barre and Scranton, Pennsylvania. America's hottest dance show is back in northeastern Pennsylvania. Dance Fever auditions are underway, and this could be your chance to dance your way to Hollywood and appear on national television. Whatever your dance style is, come down and audition. Call KRZ FM or WNEP and reserve your audition time now. Everyone's invited to join us each audition night as we dance the night away at the Lackawanna Hilton in Scranton. If you own a dog, you could find yourself in trouble with the law if your pooch doesn't have a license. As Newswatch 16's Mark Davis reports, the push is on to get the pets licensed. You could call it the dog patrol. State dog law enforcement officers call it a license drive. But no matter what you call it, the questions are the same. State dog warden checking dogs. Just wonder how many dogs you have. Over the next few weeks and months, these officers will be spot checking 10 counties in our area, making sure all the dogs they see have licenses. The state has asked you to fill out one of these dog license applications. It's a small application. It should only take you about five minutes. The cost, about $5. But if you don't take the time and spend the money now, it could cost you a lot more later. The fine runs from zero to $300 for the first time if, if the defender did, has a, a no number of violations, then it will cost them around, it becomes a misdemeanor, and it will cost them anywhere from 25 to and 90 days in jail. Gene Ziak is a supervisor of dog law enforcement in our area. The stricter penalties will only come after the initial drive. The next time these guys come to town, it won't be announced. Sure, it's the law, but it also helps to have a license if you lose your dog. Without the, the license attached to the dog's collar, uh, it t does take longer to match up the pet with its owner. The SPCA gets a constant flow of strays without licenses. Some never go back to their owner. The best advice? Get your license now because it saves time, trouble, and money later. Mark Davis, Newswatch 16, Luzerne County. Still ahead, tying the knot with an old flame. But first, meteorologist Tom Clark will try to warm things up a bit for all of us, Tom. Well, I hate to disappoint you both, but uh -oh. I won't be talking about any warm-ups mm -hmm. coming. But I will have the weekend weather picture in detail from the backyard when we come back. Photography Nature's Best, Saturday. In Williamsport tonight, a controversial zoning decision favors some homeless men. Williamsport City Council tonight said yes to the American rescue workers. The group wants to convert this old factory into a shelter for about 150 homeless men. Some of the high street neighborhood residents were against the re rezoning request. Their attorney says he'll appeal tonight's council vote through the courts. Williamsport Mayor Lucchese says he won't sign the law, but also added he won't veto it either. It'll become law in 20 days. Well, let's go out to the backyard and see what the winter weather is going to be yeah. like, Tom. Uh, yes. Karen and Owen, I would love nothing more than to say it's going to go to 60 this weekend. But... Uh -huh, we'd like to hear it, too. <laughs> well, you won't. <laughs> Sorry to say. Cloudy skies now over all of northeastern and central Pennsylvania. Some snow flurries now in this backyard. Let me show you the readings as they stand in the wind. Old man winter, uh, kind of a stubborn kind of guy. Doesn't give up too easily. 38 degrees now with the humidity at 72 percent. The wind west at 16, gusting to 24, and the barometer is rising. The range in temperature today, 43 for the high. The low this morning, 33. Normals, 47 and 30 this time of year. That record high, 82, back in 1938. That's a shot there from the borough building in beautiful downtown DuPont. Okay, let's take a look at the West Coast satellite view. It is dry, warm, and windy in Southern California tonight. The temperature now in LA is a very comfortable 70 degrees. But it's also kind of mild in the east. Down there in Miami right now, it's dry and 71 degrees. But I don't think there's going to be any school tomorrow in Marquette, Michigan. They now have 40 inches of snow on the ground, and it's still coming down. You can see these clouds up here, a, a giant pinwheel of 
cold, cloudy, unstable air uh, circulating counterclockwise around a very intense storm tonight centered north of Lake Ontario. Now, because of this storm's very slow movement, our weather here tomorrow will look and feel much like it did today. Now, this storm system out here can put down as much as 10 inches of snow tonight in the mountains of Colorado. Some heavy thunderstorms now in Texas, and this storm looks like it will begin to have effect on our weather come Sunday. Uh, but uh, Saturday looks much better than Sunday at this point. Here's the forecast for the morning rush hour tomorrow. A cloudy sky once again. We're getting kind of used to that, I think, by now. A cold wind coming out from the west. Uh, some snow flurries scattered around the area. Uh, only in the highest elevations uh, might there be a coating, enough to ice up a few ramps. Uh, but otherwise, uh, driving should be OK tomorrow morning. But dress warm. Clark's Green, 31, 29. The low tomorrow morning in Bear Creek, 31 Mahanoy City, and near freezing in Muncie tomorrow morning. During the day on Friday tomorrow, some sprinkles of rain and some snow flurries mixed in, that wind gusting up to 20 at times in the afternoon, and the sun may peek through at times as well. Uh, 41 the high in Tawanda and Scranton. In Columbia County, Stillwater, 43, 42 in Gilberton, out there in State College tomorrow, about 42 for the high. Your health watch tomorrow, if you're weather sensitive, well, uh, the cold wind may not do much for your mood, but remember that it's Friday. Now, the sunrise and sunset tomorrow, three minutes longer above the horizon than what it was today, 602 and 619. Some snow flurries tonight into tomorrow. The wind will continue. 41 should be the high. 47 on Saturday, a beautiful day on Saturday. The wind light. Uh, some rain possible late Sunday. I do see a dry start on Sunday, maybe some sunshine, but by late in the day, possibly some rain, partly sunny on Monday, about 49 degrees. But Karen and Nolan, uh, if you always remember to blame me when the weather is nice, <laughs> I'll take the blame for the cloudy skies and the cold wind coming tomorrow. Oh, okay? we know it's not All your right. fault. What can right. you do? Yeah, we'll Thanks, never blame so. you. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Coming up, back to business for the college basketball guys. Plus, getting down to business in the Phillies outfield. Joe Zone and the 16 sports screen is next. Skycam 16 is everywhere. A lot of people are not looking for the Phillies to repeat in the National League East again. Too many ifs, including a big problem in the outfield. The problem is one that every team would love to have. Too many ball players. Gary Matthews appears to have left field locked up, but center and right fields are up for grabs. Joe LaFay and Sixto Lescano have been working in right. They apparently will be platooned depending upon the pitcher. You got to stay ready. It's a matter of uh, go to the ballpark, know what you can do. And uh, if you're not in the starting lineup, you got to work as hard as if you are. The only thing I can do is go out and do my best uh, with my ability. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to make decisions. Uh, hopefully I can make a decision uh, by the way I play. It's up to them to play me. Meanwhile, in center, there was a real battle between longtime veteran Gary Maddox and second-year Philly Von Hayes. The Phillies tried to unload Maddox in the offseason, but no one was interested enough to make a deal. He's having a terrific spring, putting a lot of pressure on Hayes. Hayes is spending a lot of extra time this spring in the batting cage, hoping the extra time on the fundamentals will give him a head start on the outfield job. We're trying to get some kind of style down a little bit, get some rhythm, and uh, I'm, I'm not too far away from the way I want to uh, swing. I just uh, um, getting some flow, going back, keep my weight back, and um, just trying to get my legs and my hands working together. Hayes came under a lot of pressure last year, his first with the Phillies. The key player in the deal that sent Manny Trio, Julio Franco, and others to Cleveland. He's supposed to be a major contributor and says if he can just stay healthy, he'll live up to those expectations. Problem is, Hayes, like Maddox, Lascano, and LaFay, may not have much time to get things going because the Phillies outfield situation looks pretty much like one big revolving door. Exhibition baseball today. The Phillies knocked off by Pittsburgh 5-3. The Yankees beat Cincinnati the final there 6-4. Well, the party's over for guys like Jets lineman Mark Gastineau who like to show off after a big play. NFL says, uh-uh, no more. They're not going to allow that kind of stuff. Next thing you know, they'll be taking away the spike in the end zone and then maybe the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. What are they doing to us? <laughs> National Hockey League scoreboard now. New York Islanders, Boston 3-3 overtime finish there. Rangers 5, New Jersey 3, and that is correct. 13-4, to 
Philadelphia over Pittsburgh. Now, how about the ski watch? Six days away from baseball season, right? Camelback and Tannersville, 24 slopes, three lifts. They're still going, though, folks. There's snow up there. Elk Mountain, Uniondale, nine slopes, three lifts. Jack Frost, 18 slopes, five lifts. Shawnee has 12 slopes and four lifts, 10 to 45 inch base. Tanglewood and Lake Wall and Paw Pack, six slopes, three lifts, 36 to 60 inch base. There's the fish <laughs> forecast for tomorrow. Two late scores just in. Kentucky won its game. They advance. North Carolina down by four with two minutes to go. That could be a major upset. Yeah, for okay, sure. Okay, still going. Okay. okay thanks, Joe. Thanks, yes. Joe. All right. Still ahead, fanning the flames of love. We'll meet the couple who's a perfect match when we come back. <laughs> Finally tonight, the story of a burning romance. As Catherine Daly reports, only true love could spark a wedding ceremony like this one in Georgia. Saturday. Believe it or not, Cheryl Bowie is not dressing to put out a fire. She's primping for her wedding, and these are her wedding clothes. You see, Cheryl is marrying Ralph Deal, a training officer at the Statesboro Fire Department, and they wanted to do something different. This is different. Cheryl and Ralph are getting married in this burning house on a street in Statesboro. That's what Ralph wanted. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> He, you know, they just thought of this unique idea, so... Obviously not a place for old lace. The two are decked out in flame-retardant clothes. She didn't want the marriage to go up in smoke. And of course, flowers wouldn't do in a blazing building, so the bride-to-be carried a fire extinguisher. Then, amid a background of Deal's colleagues putting their training to work, the couple exchanged vows. Certainly a fiery way to start off a marriage, but would they do it again? 25th anniversary. How was it in there, Ralph? It was hot. Yeah, like you planned? Yeah, maybe a little harder than we planned. After accepting congratulations, the deals left for a wedding reception. No limo for these two. At where else? The fire station. Catherine Daly for ABC News, Statesboro, Georgia. <laughs> there are so many comments people are thinking about. Uh -huh. We'll just let you think about yours and say that that's our update report for a Thursday. <laughs> and for the first news of the day, join Frank Andrews, meteorologist Noreen Clark, and Jay Christopher for News Watch 16 this morning at 6.30. For the team, thank you for joining us. Good night.